Mr. Attila Ribi and Ms. Mura Sabu, uh, who are here smiling and waving to you. And it's a very good thing that uh, those social exercising is being, extra, uh, social distancing is being exercised. They are still together. And I would like to also uh, give a very warm uh, welcome to uh, Ms. Anna Sombathe of the uh, international office as well. She's in the right hand corner of the screen. Uh, I am an uh, external uh, uh, educational consultant uh, in affiliation of some sorts with uh, Budapest Business School. And today we are here uh, to uh, hear about some of the attractive and new uh, features and the new attractive features um, of uh, Budapest Business School, which is one of the primary institutions of higher education, uh, uh, higher education of its sort uh, in Budapest, in the throbbing heart of uh, Hungary's beautiful capital. I've actually brought with myself uh, a very nice uh, booklet which features the chain bridge. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can see it or not, but I think you can, though it is a it is a beautifully illuminated bridge that not only connects Buda and Pest, the two parts of Budapest, basically, it used to be two cities a long time ago, but the chain bridge also acts as a connecting link between uh, Budapest and any other country or Hungary and any other country that is looking forward to establishing good connections with Bangladesh, with India and with Pakistan. And we are establishing this contact right now uh, with uh, the three countries, as well as Nepal, uh, that I've mentioned, countries from the subcontinent. And here we've got a number of agents, uh, including uh, GSC Global Solutions, uh, to whom I owe a debt of gratitude for having organized uh, today's event um, uh, in, an, in, attempt, uh, in an attempt to attract uh, increasing numbers of students uh, from uh, all over Bangladesh. Nepal, Pakistan, and India, and of course from these four countries, the subcontracted agents or the associates, the uh, companies in coordination with GSC Global Solutions are going to be present, and they will be answering questions that are um, uh, that are originating from students. So students at the very end of the uh, presentation will be asking questions and you will be asked to kindly respond to these questions uh, since you've had uh, uh, some experience in the uh, under your belt. And uh, we do believe that it's going to be a very fruitful discussion. So I believe that without further ado, uh, I would like to give you the word and uh, perhaps give the word to Mr. Um, uh, Mohamed uh, Shoaib Chi, who is the uh, CEO and managing director, the mastermind behind today's event from GSC Global Solutions. Thanks. And uh, and I think the floor is yours. Uh, I will be moderating the event together with Mr. Mohamed uh, and whoever from uh, the uh, uh, current uh, uh, presenters uh, wishes to intervene. You know, please please feel free to do so. We would like to, uh, of course, give a very warm welcome to the students who are listening in and who would like to learn a, a, a great deal about the different programs and especially the career paths uh, which are provided by uh, Budapest uh, Business School. Well, it's not a school that is providing it, but you yourself, but what uh, you are made eligible if you have taken a degree from BBS. Okay, so the floor is yours. I'm sorry if I've talked uh, you know, a bit too much. Uh, and then I assume that we should make this uh, a very flexible, very, uh, very convivial discussion amongst all of us. Uh, meaning that if anybody has questions in the meantime, uh, or certainly I prefer that questions should be raised at the end, uh, but if there is something that is very unclear for us, please uh, do not hesitate to you know, raise a hand and uh, we will try to make this as conversational as possible. Okay, so thank you very much. Now on to uh, Mr. Ribi and uh, Ms. Sabo. Okay, thank you very much. Uh Hello, everyone. Is, uh, anyone can hear me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Right, thank you. Well, uh, 
I'd like to um, say hello to everyone and uh, thanks for listening to us today. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the capital city of Hungary and uh, basically the uh, the life of our international students in general in Hungary and um, at BBS. Okay. But before I do so, I'd like to introduce myself in a nutshell. So as you may know already, my name is Attila, like Attila the Hun, and I've been working as an international coordinator for almost two years now at BBS. Well, basically, I'm helping our international students uh, with their basic needs uh, and um, in terms of accommodations and health insurance card and basically study issues as well. I used to be an international student myself, uh, having classmates from all over the world. So I think uh, it helps me understand the needs uh, or for international students. So about uh, about Budapest, the uh, previously separate towns of Buda, Oguda and Pest were officially unified in 1873, giving the new name to the city Budapest. That's when the city entered a new age of uh, prosperity as well. Today, Budapest is one of the most popular tourist destinations, visited more than 4.2 million tourists each year. The uh, city has several World Heritage sites, including the panorama of the Danube Bank, the Buda Castle District on Rashi Street and the Hero Square, not to mention the Millennium Underground, that is the second oldest in the world after the London Tube. Budapest is a friendly city where people or students gather together from all over the world. The city is also famous for its bustling cultural life, spas and wellness centers and extensive party areas. So undeniably, Budapest is a dream for young people or for international for our international students for the great opportunities at a reasonable cost. A few words about the uh, the future opportunities and employment in, in Hungary. Being part of the European Union since 2004, Hungary has long been a powerful player in the European and the global economy. Several multinational companies have offices and facilities here, taking, one, taking advantage of uh, the benefits such as the country's central European location to start with. International companies are always interested in and keen on employing qualified young workers from all over the world, basically. But as you may know, students are only allowed to work 24 hours per week with a student visa, so they can only apply for a part-time job during the academic year. The academic year consists uh, of two terms or semesters, as you may know, the fall semester that lasts from September till the uh, end of January, and then the spring semester that lasts from the beginning of February till the end of June. Okay, so that means that in that period, students are only allowed to go 24 hours. Outside the academic year, they can actually uh, get full-time employment if they wish. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, talking about the cultural life and sport activities at BBS, the faculties of the university organize a series of events called Faculty Days each year prior to the summer examination period with a variety of opportunities for relaxing, like professional programs, performances, games, concerts. In the evenings, performers from Hungary will entertain the audience. BBS is also offering a range of cultural programs, like New Year's concert, generations meeting, manifest, and photo competitions, for example, 
talking about all the activities that we've got, um, these are like basketball, football, tennis, table tennis, bodybuilding, swimming, hiking, gymnastics, and so on. So a lot of sport activities we've, we have. We also have libraries at all faculties. They have their own public libraries where students have access to international databases. Further assistance is also provided by the digital library, offering easy access to articles, theses, studies, periodicals and teaching materials closely linked to the academic courses offered, offered by the university between February and the end of June. Okay, I'm very sorry uh, for interrupting, but yeah. in case you have a, a PPT presentation to display, so all of this, you know, this wealth of information you're sharing with us can mm -hmm. also be displayed to the students. Would you be able to share it on the screen? Uh, yeah. I'm sure our, our audience and also the agents uh, would be very appreciative of that in yeah. case you have it for, for now. Yeah, I think we do have that. Um, I just have to, have to have a look. Okay, and uh, we'll share it in a moment. Okay, well, thank you very okay. much. Well, that's okay, not at all. Uh, just a moment, please. Okay. In the in the meantime, I will be addressing just a few ideas to the uh, to the audience. Uh, at the very end of the presentation, everybody will have the opportunity to ask a few questions. Uh, these questions will be morphing in on the uh, screen, so we will all be able to see this. But I would like to ask one of the colleagues of Mohammed to uh, give a reading to these and read it out loud when uh, some pertinent questions, so not all the questions, arrive. So we are not going to be answering all these 60 or 70 questions, but we will try to categorize them and as these categories come into being uh, we will be able to respond to them uh, more specifically like one cohort of questions or one group of questions uh, will be will have to be addressed okay okay so in the meantime I think uh, have you uh, managed to come uh, upon the presentation dear mr. Suleiman you can discuss to our student about Bengali language so you can say something from our presentation so they can join us and they can write their comments we will shortly answer to them after presentation unlikely shukriya shikharthi bandhura aapnaderke akhto aamadheri live session join karad jonno aamra aapnaderke shadur aag shamon aamontron jana chhe abang aapnaderke aamadheri pakkho teke ushno abortona jana chhe aamadheri live session join karad jonno shukriya shikharthi bandhura aamra Hungary Budapest Business School and Journal, the program to Ajahn Kurti, Apostol, I can take the person about the delicate Roachan, University of the Roachan, Tara, on a Shundur Kore presentation pitch for the Jono Postapon Kurban and Gitopurbe, University details about a Guru Bisha Alchana Kurta. Abong, a mother a presentation of Purbik to preparation after the Kibulu opera, if you formally keep to be for personal card on Tista Kuban after Jana Jono de Bishagulatse, like Tishon Fist, take a Shudu Kore, processing. মানে কি কি বিষয়গুলো আপনার জানার আছে প্রশ্নগুলো স্পেসিফিক করবেন সাথে সাথে আপনার একাডেমিক ডকুমেন্টস গুলো কি পাস করেছেন যাতে আমরা আপনাকে প্রপার একটা সাজেশন ডেলিগেটের কাছ থেকে নিয়ে দিতে পারি যিনি আমাদেরকে প্রেজেন্টেশন দিচ্ছেন অথবা আমরা আপনাদেরকে প্রশ্ন করার সময় আপনি কবে পাস করেছেন রেজাল্ট কেমন এবং কোন প্রোগ্রামে যেতে যাচ্ছেন সকল বিষয়গুলো যদি ডিটেইলস দেয়া থাকে সেটা আমাদের জন্য উত্তর দেয়া আপনার জন্য খুব ইজি হয়ে যাবে সো দ্যাট সেই বিষয়ে খেয়াল রেখে আমাদেরকে যোগাযোগ মানে মেসেজ দিতে চেষ্টা করবেন আর পাশাপাশি কিভাবে স্কলারশিপ কি পাবো কিনা এবং পরবর্তী ফিউচার গুলো সেটেলমেন্ট সকল বিষয়ে আলোচনা করতে পারবেন তবে আমাদের এই প্রোগ্রামটা যেহেতু অল্প সময়ের জন্য মৌলিকভাবে একাডেমিক বিষয়গুলো আলোচনা করলেই আমাদের জন্য ভালো হবে আপনার জন্য উত্তর পেতে সুবিধা হবে বাকি কথাগুলো যেহেতু একটা কনসোডিয়ামের মতোই আমরা আর আয়োজন করেছি সেই হিসাবে আপনারা এই কনসোডিয়ামের যে কারো মাধ্যমে যোগাযোগ করে তথ্যগুলো জানতে পারবেন অবশ্যই আমাদের এই তথ্যগুলো দেওয়ার জন্য আমরা আপনাদের সাপোর্ট সেন্টার হিসাবে বসে আছি বাকি টিউশন ফিস থেকে শুরু করে এভরিথিং আমরা আপনাকে সাপোর্ট দিতে পারবো ডকুমেন্টেশনের বিষয়গুলো এবং ভিসা প্রাপ্তির বিষয়ে আমরা 
প্রপারলি আপনাকে ভিসা কনফার্মেশন দিচ্ছি না যে আপনি অবশ্যই ভিসা পাবেন আমরা আপনাদেরকে সার্ভিস এন্ড ফিউর করতেছি আপনি অ্যাডমিশন যে অ্যাডমিশনের জন্য কি কি কাজ করতে হবে সেই ডকুমেন্টসগুলো আপনাকে দিব অ্যাডমিশন ইউনিভার্সিটিকে পাঠাবো ইউনিভার্সিটি অ্যাডমিশন প্রসেস করবে আমরা ভিসা প্রসেসিংয়ের জন্য আপনাকে গাইডলাইন দেবো উই আর মানে অ্যাজ এ সার্ভিস প্রোভাইডার হিসাবে সার্ভিস প্রোভাইড করবো বাট আপনার আপনাকে গ্যারান্টি দিচ্ছি না আমরা আপনাকে ভিসা দিয়ে দিব বাট এই বিষয়গুলো মাথায় রেখে অবশ্যই আমরা প্রশ্ন করার জন্য চেষ্টা করব আমাদের প্রেজেন্টেশন প্রায় রেডি সো আপনাদের প্রশ্নগুলো সুন্দরভাবে লিখে রাখুন এবং এখানে যে উত্তর পেয়ে যাবেন এর পরবর্তী যদি কোনো প্রশ্ন থেকে থাকে অবশ্যই স্পেসিফিকলি আমাদেরকে করবেন আমরা অবশ্যই আপনাদের প্রশ্ন দেব ধন্যবাদ সোয়েব ভাই Okay, dono, dono vat. Thank you very much and shukriya uh, yes, for the you. Urdu speakers. <laughs> okay, and in the meantime, I can see that uh, uh, Atila and Nora, if I may uh, uh, call you on a first name basis, have uh, uh, found and shared uh, the screen. Are we ready or should we have, in the meantime, an introduction in Urdu, perhaps, from uh, Mr. Mohamed? Okay, that's right. Uh, ंग and we have actually a lot of students we have sent to hungary so this is the first time we are working with these universities and this is very good opportunities for us even for our bangladesh students because they are going to apply newly from new delhi embassies so who already did not apply yet they can contact us immediately we are giving to them admission process supporting everything so there is a something student are taking panic last yesterday one of the newspaper they make them one fake news is not only fake there is some specifically news they provided uh, all bangladeshis and others student people are cannot travel in sengin areas this is not true this is actually a sh for short term visit sengin visas they are they are making for them who can travel so still they are rescheduling which country people can travel to the hungaries ami banglay bolchi jara bangladeshi student jete jacchen apnara goto kalker je news niye onekei tension achen seta ashole kono otto kono news na eta niye bangla tribune ekta news koreche she khetre ei news ta niye onekei amra tension feel korteche amader onek student amader theke eta niye jiggesh kortechilo তাদেরকে আমি ক্লিয়ারলি বলতে চাই এটা কোনো প্রপারলি ফাইনাল কোনো ডিসিশন না এবং আমাদের দেশের ইন্টারন্যাশনাল স্টুডেন্ট ট্রাভেল করার হচ্ছে আগামী জুলাই ছয় তারিখ থেকেই নন থার্ড ওয়ার নন সেঞ্জিন কান্ট্রিজ নন ইউরোপিয়ান কান্ট্রি পিপলগুলো ট্রাভেল করতে পারবে ইউরোপিয়ান কান্ট্রিগুলোতে সেক্ষেত্রে ওরা কিছু কিছু কান্ট্রিকে অ্যাড করতেছে সেঞ্জিন ভিসার জন্য ওই ক্ষেত্রেও যারা লং টার্ম ভিসা ডি ক্যাটাগরি ভিসার নিয়ে অ্যাপ্লাই করবে তাদের জন্য কোনো প্রবলেম নাই student this is work permit ba jara long term business visa niye jabe tader jonno problem na eta shudhu only short term visa jara uh, visit visa jete chacche tader jonno only restriction bangladesh restriction na bangladesh ke ekono add kore nai so within one week even 15 days tara eta revise korbe abar student gula jete par uh, travel korte parbe even bangladesh o onek desher jonno ekono porjonto travel off ami ekta european o jodi bangladesh e aste jay tarao aste parben na amar deshe so it has a regular actor process so she can you have no like your tension for when that so i'm going to give the floor to the our honorable guest to present the presentation uh we will talk later on thank you hello sir you can continue the presentation please okay all right um thank you very much uh basically i was going to talk about two more topics uh the accommodations and um, about uh, a few words um, about health insurance card so um, talking about the accommodations what students need to know that uh, unfortunately the three faculties uh, each of each of the faculties has their own official dorms but there are only a limited number of places that we can offer to your international students but please don't be afraid because this is why i'm here for actually and all my colleagues are offering help for those looking for an apartment or looking for an accommodation in hungary i know it's not easy but uh, it's not impossible of course 
Uh, the other thing is, um, as you might know, every student uh, needs to have uh, health insurance cover. There are several uh, health insurance companies offering uh, health insurance cards or covers for international students. Well, normally we suggest our international students to take generally as a health insurance provider. It's, um, you can get it as a reasonable cost uh, and they are actually really helpful. Uh, that's, that's what we think and that's why we normally offer them. So all in all, uh, I hope that all the international students will love uh, the city of Budapest and uh, I really hope that uh, I can welcome them in the near future and, and meet personally to be able to say hello and uh, wish them all the best. And uh, now, so I'm, I'm about to finish <clears throat> what I was going to talk about and uh, I'd like to give the word to my colleague, uh, to Miss Maura Sabo, who will continue on and talk about the, uh, the faculties and uh, the available programs that the uh, international students can apply for. So thank you very much for listening. Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to say sorry because we didn't prepare a proper uh, presentation because uh, we thought we will talk freely, but we can make a presentation. We can send you later if you if you need it. But most no of problem. The, Thank you. Okay. Most of the most important information are online or on our uh, website. So uh, my name is uh, Nora. I'm working as an international coordinator at uh, Budapest Business School. I also graduated uh, on the Faculty of International Management and Business uh, as, an international, as an international relations expert. It was my master's. So I, I know very well this, uh, this course. And I was also an exchange student. Uh, I was two times an Erasmus student, so I know what are the most difficulties uh, for the international students. Um, yeah. So I would like to introduce briefly the, the Budapest Business School and also our uh, programs. And I will share my screen. So, Budapest Business School is the largest university of applied sciences in Hungary, and uh, we have uh, 16,000 students in the area of tourism and hospitality, international business, economics, commerce and marketing, finance and accountancy, business administration and management, and also human resources. Our history dates back to the Academy of Commerce, established in 1857. And um, in 2000, uh, the BBS was established by merging three renewed colleges. And in 2016, from January 1st, we awarded the rank of the University of Applied Sciences. Now we have uh, three faculties, and all of these faculties are in Budapest. Um, this is the Faculty of Commerce, Hospitality and Tourism, the Faculty of International Management and Business, and the Faculty of Finance and Accountancy, and we also have a Foreign Language Examination and Training Center. The university's mission is to become one of the leading economic universities of applied sciences in the Central European region. With this focus, we continuously strive to offer our students knowledge that is useful in practice and is an expectation of the employment market in order to enable them to become professionals who are well prepared, socially responsible and who have wide perspective, innovative skills, solid knowledge of their particular field and including foreign languages. Our university has a, a broad international network with more than 200 higher education institutes in 50 foreign or uh, in 50 countries on five continents. 
with some of which we have a double degree agreement. And currently we have uh, 600 foreign students uh, studying at BPS. And uh, I made some research and we have uh, three students from Bangladesh, 11 from Pakistan, 17 from India, and we unfortunately uh, have uh, zero students from Nepal yet. So here you can see our training areas. So it's mostly economics, uh, humanities, teacher training, social sciences, and business. We have uh, 12 uh, bachelor programs and eight master programs, but for the international students, we offer five uh, bachelor programs. It's uh, business administration and management, commerce and marketing, uh, finance and accounting, uh, international economics, tourism and catering. And here you can see on the list the uh, communication and media science, but uh, it won't be launched uh, in the next uh, academic year, unfortunately. Our master programs are international business economy, uh, international relations and tourism management. These are uh, all in uh, English language. And now I will talk about uh, of the programs. Short introduction. So the commerce and marketing uh, bachelor program is uh, the duration is eight uh, is seven semesters, and the objective of this program is to train economic professionals with commercial and marketing expertise and skills. And uh, in the end of the program, they should be ready to continue their studies also in master programs. They have to earn uh, 210 credit points. And in the qualification uh, in English is economist in commerce and marketing. So it's gonna be written in their degree. The finance and accounting is uh, one of the bachelor programs of the finance and accountancy uh, faculty. Um, it, it also uh, takes a seven semester to complete this degree. And the objective of the program is to educate financial and accounting professionals with up-to-date economical knowledge suited to the international requirements and theoretical, factual and methodologi methodolog methodological knowledge of financial and accounting applications. The business administration and management uh, bachelor program is also at the Faculty of Finance and Accountancy. It is also seven semester long program. The international business economics uh, bachelor program is, uh, is available in English and in French language. Uh, the duration is eight semester long and from these eight semester, one semester is the internship. Tourism and catering bachelor program is uh, at the Faculty of Tourism and Hospitality. Uh, and it's, it takes eight semester to complete this degree. We have three master programs offered. Uh, the international business economics, business business economy. I'm sorry, I made a mistake on this presentation. So um, it is a four semester long program. Also, the <coughs> relations and the tourism management programs. These are all four semester long programs. And now I, I show you the application form. So when students are uh, applying to the university, 
uh, the first step is that they have to choose the program what they want to apply for. These programs you can find on the website and very detailed. Uh, it is written very detailedly that you need to know about the programs. Um, so um, before you are sending this uh, application form to us, you you have to make sure you have the, the following documents. So in case you are applying for bachelor program, we need to have we need to receive the copy of the secondary school graduation certificate and this notarized English translation. Other documents um, from the previous studies, like the transcript of reports in English. It is very important if you are applying for for our English programs that you have a B2 level English uh, language certificate. It's the the CFR, uh, so the Common European Network uh, recognized English language profic proficiency, like the IELTS five minimum level is five point five or TOEFL or TOEIC or Cambridge, Cambridge language exam. We also need to have your photocopy of your passport, which has to be valid at least for six months, uh, calculated from the beginning of the planned studies. You have to send us a medical certificate of satisfactory, satisfactory health condition that allows you to study in a foreign language, foreign country. And we also need a CV and a motivation letter written in English. If you are applying for for master uh, program, you need to send us your bachelor degree certificate and its notarized English translation. Also, uh, other previous studies, documents of other previous studies, B2 level English language uh, certificate, medical certificate, CV, motivation letter, and uh, photocopy of your passport. But before you are sending your application, um, you need to pay an application fee, which is uh, which is five, which is 150 euros. It's a one-off and a non-refundable fee. And uh, if you transfer the, the money, you need to send us uh, the receipt of your transfer. And uh, if, you, if you have your application folder, you, don't, you, you do not have to forget to sign your application form and send, send uh, this to these email addresses. And uh, if you send uh, your application folder, there are uh, three kind of decisions, three type of decisions. You can be accepted, conditionally accepted, or rejected. If you are accept, uh, accepted, that means that uh, all the documents you sent us was uh, okay, and you don't have to send more documents. You just need to wait for our uh, decision. If you get the answer conditionally accepted, that means that uh, you accept it to the program that you have to send us some missing documents, like if you are about to finish your studies at the secondary school and you have not received your secondary school leaving certificate yet, you can send us later, so you are conditionally accepted. It also can happen if you have, don't have uh, English language yet, English language uh, exam yet, And if you are rejected, that means that uh, that you do not meet the admission requirements due to your insufficient insuff language proficiency or study results in the secondary school, or or another important thing that you have to be 18 years old if you are applying, and you have to complete your 18th birthday by the start of your studies.
if you get a preliminary letter of acceptance, you have to pay the the um, tuition fee for the first semester. The tuition fee for the bachelor programs uh, is two thousand and four hundred euros, and for the master programs, it's three uh, three thousand euros per semester. And if you receive the money, we will issue you the letter of admission decision. And with this letter, you can go to to your uh, to the nearest uh, Hungarian embassy to your country and to get to apply for a study visa. And one more important thing that the application deadline uh, should be the end of June, but but now. Uh, the deadline is the, the, the 15th of July. So I think I wanted to tell you all the things, but if you have any questions, I can answer. Uh, try to answer. Well, thank you very much. We've been uh, impressed through and through with the presentation, and I do believe that the proportion of uh, the conversational part that you uh, uh, taught, and very rightly so, to do uh, in a flexible manner uh, and in an, in, an, in an open discourse was just fine. Uh, and I think we don't have to you know, view all those uh, otherwise quite boring uh, PPTs, which are full of information, useful information. But we, what we really wanted to do today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, was to introduce you a new product on the Hungarian market. Again, in the meantime, I've been viewing some of the questions that the audience, that the future students have been asking. So this is Hungary and not Poland. Let me show you this uh, Lonely Planet book. So Hungary for the sake of those who uh, haven't realized. Um, and we've got a few questions just uh, as a means to clarify a few concrete ideas. Uh, thank you very much for giving us a very detailed uh, application process. And uh, I think we will just go through uh, step by step in the next five minutes, if that is possible. You have mentioned that an application fee needs to be paid. Would you tell the students how much it would cost? The application fee is uh, 150 euros, and it's a one of so three, it's non refundable. Okay, so it's a non refundable 150 euro application fee that only needs to be paid once a preliminary letter of acceptance has been issued. Uh, is that correct? No, if you, uh, if, if uh, you or the student are is sending the application form and the application folder at the same time he or she has to pay this uh, application fee. And uh, okay. even if we say he or she is accepted or rejected, he or she has to pay this Okay, okay. Yeah, that's very good. So no matter what, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to pay the application fee upfront together with the application materials. I think this is a, uh, a, a commonly applied process by many other universities. Now, one of the things that um, some, uh, some of which, so, I mean, one answer should be quite clear for that, but one of the things that uh, you haven't really specified is the different career options. So what are students, especially in their region in Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, on the subcontinent, what are they able to do as a career path? Uh, what kind of employment can they search for? I think tourism speaks for itself, but how about the others? So what are the most typical fields where uh, fresh graduates find uh, employment possibilities? Well, it also depends on which degree are they studying, because if they are studying tourism, they can work at tourism agencies or Hotels. Um. Mm -hmm. and, and apart from tourism, since you've got uh, 
quite a few other faculties with English and even French language programs, though it would not be applicable from that region. But how about the other faculties? So what, what are the career options? What can students do uh, with their degrees? Well, uh, they can work uh, in any, any sectors of business because they are studying mostly business. And, um, Okay, and this is very important actually for uh, those students coming especially from Bangladesh and India where every second student holds a degree and uh, ha sorry, has a family member who is doing some kind of business. So in order to uh, make this more efficient and in order to uh, officially uh, introduce a licensed product, it is very important to have uh, some kind of a degree, especially from a highly renowned and well accredited business school that will be uh, BBS or Budapest Business School. So th thank you very much. That's that's very good. Now, um, you have mentioned, uh, Mr. Ribi has mentioned that there is a work possibility for students. Could you elaborate on that once again? What are students able to do? Because if they go to France or Germany uh, or any other European Union country, of course, where well, we, we have a very unique situation because we speak Hungarian and in Hungary not everybody speaks English so work possibilities are limited but what is it that you can do as a way to support the students in finding uh, good work opportunities alongside their studies? Um, well, yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, uh, holding a student visa enables students to work 24 hours uh, per week during the academic year. So that means basically from the beginning of September until the end of uh, next uh, June. So that's the, uh, the academic year. They are only limited or they are only allowed to work 24 hours per week. So that means they can only apply for a part-time job. But once uh, once um, they finish their studies or once the, uh, the academic year ends, they'll be able to work in full time. I think um, it does mention even up on the immigration office website that um, during summer period they are, they are able to work in full time for three months or for 66 uh, working days, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, but thank you very much. That's very good. So everybody, you sh you can work legally. You will be able to find some kind of a job. It's not going to pay you very much. But at the same time, don't forget that Hungary is not one of the most expensive destinations. We don't like to call it cheap, but we certainly refer to it as value for money. So it is value for money because you can find dormitory accommodation, uh, and food and entertainment possibilities according to the latest government calculator for not more than 300 euros so that's a very basic fee and that is a monthly fee 300 euros so you have to consider this as opposed to france germany or the uk where you have to already think in the thousands although as a student you do get a lot of support you do get the support from hungary as well and uh, it is mr ribi who will be helping you with the international student card and the international student card actually provides you with a wealth of opportunities in terms of what you can do and where you can get a discount or where there are promotions you can go to the cinema you can go to the gym and you can enjoy the uh, manifold entertainment possibilities of budapest in uh, multiple ways so that's uh, also very good well if you want to share a flat with somebody it's a little more expensive and if you want to have a studio of your own then you have to think of uh, approximately 500 to 600 euros per month as a minimum including accommodation and many other expenses alongside that but it is still uh, not unaffordable uh, it is as we said very much value for money now you have mentioned the fees and your fees are also I would say quite reasonable compared uh, to other countries and they're aligned with the uh, fees of other countries. Um, 
Now, one of the other questions that, that I think students would like to know if there is going to be an admission interview, let's say a Skype interview uh, that you're conducting, that your uh, instructors at all the faculties are conducting to get to know the students better and to uh, establish whether they are eligible to begin their uh, international programs or not. So what information do you have on the uh, admission interview? Well, uh, the admission interview is not uh, often because if we receive, the most important if we have the, the English language certificate and the educational certificate. And if we have some questions with his or her English, we may call her or him on Skype to make sure mm -hmm. that that his or her English language is, is well spoken. Okay, so you basically check their English language, uh, their English knowledge, if I understand you correctly. Yes, but it's, it's only then if we we are not sure that the English language is. is, is mm -hmm. well, actually, one the the situation in 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 Bangladesh in. India and perhaps as well, as well as in Pakistan and Nepal are quite similar to one another. The majority of students applying do not yet hold an IELTS, a TOEFL or a TOEIC, any internationally accredited uh, document, but their English might be very good. Now, uh, there are some temporal limitations, plus considering that there are many other schools that they might be applying for, let's say, a student who already has an idea of what school he wants to attend, let's say in February or in March, uh, he will definitely go and somehow take an IELTS uh, certificate. But this is not the majority. We also have to think of students who are applying for BBS as a second or a third option. And let's say if they were applying for another school as a first option, that school did not have IELTS as a requirement. So what alternative do you offer if they do not have a language certificate yet, but they have got a very good good high school grades and they actually in reality de facto they speak very good english yeah we can arrange an interview with the student okay. so although yeah. it is it yeah. is yeah. 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 Well, that's what we are doing with yeah. other universities mostly universities are taking the skype test for uh, yeah, basic previous study was in english medium of instruction was in english so them arrange the for a Skype test or any Zoom test, whatever. After that, if they are eligible, they can give them admissions. So who have a B2 level, they can get the admission directly without entrance exam or without online test. Is it your university is also offering? Uh, actually, I, I don't know if we have an online test. But not online, but a Skype test, what the means English uh, eligibility test. Yeah, well, no, normally what happens is that um, when you when a student decides to apply for BBS, he or she will send his or her application package, including the, um, the language exam like IELTS, for example. But um, we do offer a Skype interview like under the given circumstances, like as, as we all know what, what, what is happening, uh, unfortunately. So due to that, due to this situation, all of the students uh, are unable to, to take an IELTS or any other any other language exams. So that's when we offer that that kind of because normally we don't ask for a Skype interview in case you you do have your IELTS exam. Or if a student can actually prove that the uh, that his previous studies or the uh, the study language or the educational language was English, and he can prove it, or he or he or she can prove it, then again they don't need to provide an IELTS exam, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, now yeah. one of the things that, uh, and thank you very much for answering this question and clarifying it as it was not clear, it may have sounded a bit rigorous uh, that everybody should immediately have an IELTS exam, although there are so many students who simply never had the means the financial means or considering that Bangladesh and India are extremely big countries and they do not offer uh, Skype exam, uh, sorry, they don't offer IELTS exams everywhere. 
end on a regular basis. So that's very good that you can check their eligibility online. But it's extremely important for the embassy as well to see that the students have had some uh, personal contact, a first-hand personal contact uh, with the university. And in fact, the visa officers might even ask uh, whether the student has met anybody from that university. Of course, they will say that they've met you, but that's not the same uh, as having met a professor who uh, conducted an exam and who can actually support the student. So student support from this region of the world is very important that a letter of eligibility in good faith can be uh, issued saying that the student has undergone an interview and it is not only through official documentation that he or she has been accepted. So thank you very much. And if this can be somehow clarified uh, also for uh, practical future use and uh, what uh, GSC Global Solutions and all the other associates can do here is that they can organize that the students can participate in a Skype interview in any other form of assessment in an organized form. So uh, students are not going to be making Skype calls or professors don't have to spend a week or two uh, trying to um, hunt down the students and chase the students uh, to get them for the interview, but the students can appear, let's say 20 or 30 of them who have been pre-assessed by GSC Global Solutions. Uh, we generally, uh, GSC Global Solutions ge generally run a basic test. And if the students reach at least 60% on the test, we can share this test with you, then they could attend a Skype interview. So you will only have well-informed pre-assessed students who are going in for the interview in an organized form. It means that one of your professors or two of them or a small committee can do the Skype test with them, let's say in the matter of three or four hours in one stretch. They don't have to sporadically spread it around for a week or two, and they can decide right on the spot whether students uh, uh, are rejected or they are conditionally accepted, providing that they have met all the other financial conditions and the provision of documents as uh, an integral part of the application process. Okay, so uh, if we can, you know, have a word on this later on outside the present conference, we could uh, uh, inform the students accordingly, if there is an opportunity for us uh, to do that. Okay, here is a, so many uh, questions. Yes, so there are, ma there are many questions and perhaps we should, uh, if you have uh, 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 Attila and, uh, and, and Nora, in case you've got anything, uh, you know, further to add to this, uh, please do say it or uh, would you allow us to go on to the questions that students are asking? Yes, of course. You can see the display, the questions one by one. I'm going to the share the display. Okay, would you uh, help us, Mohammed, just read them out so that everybody will have their eyes on the same about the admission interview. I mean, how is the question pattern is going to be? So I think you already answer for this question. Yeah, yeah. So there is the next question, sir. Tell us how to create our lifeline if you uh, if I don't get our good situation uh, presently. Okay. Funny questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question is the how much application fees and tuition fees master's program? I think the master's program tuition fees is three thousand, right? Yes. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. And application fees is all, uh, all the programs. Yeah. The bachelor programs are uh, two thousand four hundred euros per semester. How many master's program you are offering right now? Right now we are offering three master programs: international economy and business international relations and tourism management. These are okay. four semester long programs. Okay. okay. There is a next question. I have done bachelor in business administration in marketing. My queries are the following. Can I go for masters with relevant subject BPS? What is the minimum result requirement? ILTS, CBF, CGP, ATC. Please tell me about total tuition fees for the masters program. Thank you. So if you have a bachelor degree in business administration, uh, you can apply for international economy and economy and business, um, or you can apply 
for tourism management as well. But you need to have, uh, you need to uh, take some extra credits. So it means that maybe your studies will be half or one a year longer with taking these additional credits from the, from the senior bachelor program. So from the international business economics is the bachelor of the international economy and business. And if you have a degree in business administration, you need to take the additional credits. So you have to learn a lot. So it means that maybe you have to study half a year longer. But with this okay. business this administration a, degree, you can go directly to the international economy and business yeah, master program. So if you if you were applying for international economy and business with that bachelor of study program, or after you finish that program, you do not have to take uh, additional credits, most probably. But as opposed to applying for tourism and management then you will have to take some additional credits with that business admin administration uh, bachelor of study program, okay? Our so next question is, I want to do the master's in business. I have more than 70% mark of all my academic level. My graduation medium finishation was in English. I have no ILTS. My question are one, am I able to admit without ILTS? How much the money needed to complete my master's? What will be a be per month accommodation and living cost with dining cost. As a student, what about the part-time job facilities here? Let me know about academic session. Okay, should I answer this question? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to go okay, step by ahead. step, okay, and answer these questions. Okay, so what do you want have more than 75? Okay, so as I mentioned before, in terms of the, uh, the language, language skills, if uh, the applicant can prove that the uh, previous instructions were given in English, then they don't need to provide an English language uh, uh, document. Okay, so in that case, we do not need an IELTS exam. So yes, that, um, the answer is yes. He'll probably be able to, to get admitted if he or she can, uh, can prove that, uh, that the previous instructions were given in English. Uh, how much money needed to complete my master's? So as, as Nora was uh, mentioning before, uh, for master's programs, the, uh, the application fee that is a one-off fee and non-refundable, once again, it's 150 euros. And then apart from that, we've got the, uh, the tuition fee that is 3,000 euro per semester. So that means for a uh, four semester long, study program altogether he'll, he or she'll be looking at paying uh, 1200 and uh, plus the 150 uh, euros okay by the end of the uh the program uh well in terms of the accommodation and living costs well outside well depending depending on where the uh, the accommodation is situated so if uh, if the applicant is looking for a place in the inner city area uh, that probably will cost them more uh, as opposed to moving uh, away from the city uh, but outside it's um, it's somewhere between two, 200 and 300 euros per month per person the accommodation cost and plus the living cost and i think once again it depends on the person as well uh, it'll be really hard to say, but I would say altogether it's like 400, between 400 and 50, uh, 500, sorry, or 600 euros per month per person. So including the accommodation cost and the living cost, in, including uh, the health insurance as well. Uh, as a student, what about part-time job facilities? Well, uh, I think I've already answered that question before. Yes. Uh, yeah, by way of interrupting you just for one second before we move on to the next question, one thing uh, before we forget it, as I, I think uh, most of our days are uh, uh, throughout most of our days, we're occupied with the 
uh, question of what is happening during COVID-19, what will happen in the future. So what are the current plans of BBS? Uh, what are the contingency plans of BBS? So what will happen uh, if there is a second wave? Of course, you cannot predict if there is a second wave to the pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. But what is the current situation? What is the status quo uh, that is held by the Hungarian government as students will have to apply for a visa, applying for a visa from uh, Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, and Nepal is not very easy because students must go to India, uh, to New Delhi. They have to book an appointment uh, well in advance. Uh, in Pakistan, there is a possibility to do it in Islamabad, uh, but I do believe that currently we have got more Bangladeshi and uh, Nepalese and then Indian applicants than the Pakistanis. So what is the, uh, the BBS plan uh, or what is your official announcement for the pandemic uh, for the time being in terms of physical teaching and digital teaching? So we have... We, I, I talked to the head of the academic mobility division and he told me that the university plans to launch uh, the distance learning for foreign students, but because we have to take uh, into consideration the potential restrictions of the travel between the countries and uh, also the quarantine requirements. And also the second wave of the uh, the the COVID-19 is uh, not excluded, which may lead uh, to introduce the distance education. And the uni plans to organize distance uh, education for those new newcomers who, who, due to the restrictions, may not come to be the best already, in already in September, and can join later uh, on the classroom education in BBS. But in this case, of course, uh, uh, the student has to have the suitable equi equipment uh, to join the distance learning. And uh, if you, if the student cannot uh, arrive uh, by the beginning of September, uh, the registration of the student will be proceeded uh, uh, by distance methods. And uh, but if the student will come to Budapest, he or she has to show us his or her original documents but he or she can register online. So in that case, I have one question. Uh, suppose one student, he paid the tuition fees and he cannot apply for the visas due to the COVID-19. Uh, Hungary embassy New Delhi is not open is still. And in the meantime, your classes start uh, by distance learning online classes. After that, when he or she is going to apply for the visa, and if she is or he has got the rejection, in that case, what is your plan for refund policies? Well, that's a good question, to be honest with you. Well, normally what happens if someone pays the tuition fee and um, they are unable to start their studies uh, because of that reason, of course, um, the, uh, the paid fee will be refunded to them with the deduction of the, uh, the bank transfer costs. But I think it's uh, but I think it's a negligible uh, amount looking at the the, uh, the paid tuition fee, right? But it's a lot of question marks, so I think nothing has be, has been decided yet. I think we've all been waiting and um, and see what happens. Basically, that's that's all we can do at this stage. And uh, from GST part, uh, we have one request to the team of uh, BBS whole and our honorable guest Dr. Rundak Shardi as well. And due to the end of the time of the admission deadline, almost 29, so we are requesting to the open admission deadline for us until end of July. Yeah, that will be better for us. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> you can talk to the youth management levels. So yeah. this is the request. This is a request, yes. This is a request because uh, students are uh, going to apply. So uh, if uh, we have time, that will be uh, very good for us. I think our honorable guest, Dr. Rudy, you can explain in your local word in Hungarian. So yeah, please. 
I, I, I'll do it, but of course, I'm sure that you know we all have a very professional understanding of the question. But since we wanted to create a friendly atmosphere, a friendly yet professional atmosphere, it means that we need to have the human voice here, and our our future students must also see that we are trying to communicate and not necessarily negotiate a new day. That is why, of course, I think they also have a question. Azt értették, hogy ugye ez egy, egy ilyen trial period szerűség lenne, hogy meg tudja mutatni a GSC Global Solutions annak érdekében, hogy jó hallgatókat tudnak hozni, már tudnak hallgatókat toborozni, tehát azért az itt lévő hallgatók közül, akik mondjuk szerintem vannak 4-5 ezeren, ezt majd később meg tudjuk pontosan, hogy hányan nézték a közvetítésünket. Szerintem nagyon sokan ugye nem, hát már jelentkeztek máshová, de ez nem azt jelenti, hogy mindenhová fel is veszik őket, és nem azt jelenti, hogy mondjuk a, a BGN-ek, a képzései, azok nem lesznek sokkal szimpatikusabbak. Tehát e, itt még lehet az utolsó percben egy párfordulás. Tehát ezt, ennek kéne valahogy utána nézni a refund policy mellett, ami szintén egy nagyon neurologikus kérdés lehet, abban az esetben, hogy még nagyon sok hallgatónak elutasítják a későbbiekben a vizumát, akkor ők szeretik tudni, hogy mi az, ami de, re, befizetik a pénzt, és nagyjából, ha ők kitöltik majd a visszatérítési éveket a tandi visszatérítésre, akkor mennyi időn és belül kapnak vissza, és mennyi pénz. Tehát mondjuk ez a két kérdés, hogy ki lehetett tolni mondjuk legalább egy két héttel most egy a július közepéig a jelentkezési határidőt a Covid-ra való tekintettel, és miért természetesen mindenben segítünk, tehát én jelen pillanatban nem Magyarországon tartozkodom, de tehát én is ott vagyok, és Annával együtt közösen azért ők, úgy látom, ők kínálják a leggazdagabb képzési portfóliót, de azon kívül, hogyha a többi kar is beleegyezik, mert szerintem hogy egy kari, illetve egy tanszéki beleegyezés is kellenek, akkor ők ha önök hajlanának-e arra, hogy ezt a jelentkezési határidőt valamennyivel kitoljuk? Hát ez, ez, ezért is említettem, hogy általában ez egyébként június 30 os vége szokott lenni, de hogy most július 15 évvel ez árul a hát, Igen, ez, 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 a, ez a bevett szokás. Természetesen mi lennénk szerintem a legboldogabbak, ha ez egyébként megtörténne. Nem, nem szeretnénk ebben állást foglalni. Ezt nyilván ugye Értem. Jó, köszönöm. Aztán már azért is jobb, ha most magyarul beszéljük meg, tehát jó, de szerintem váltsunk vissza angolra, hogy ne lépjenek ki túl sokan, mert itt szerintem itt már írni szoktak, hogy beszéljünk érthető nyelven, úgyhogy ha, ha nem vágyják. Yeah, so if you don't mind, we will just switch back to Hungarian. Uh, and although for the time being we cannot promise you anything, ladies and gentlemen, regarding the uh, application deadline, the admission deadline, uh, uh, the two uh, uh, professionals, the two associates of the International Mobility Office have given us a promise that they will try to do their best to communicate the request to the uh, to the university's uh, management. I think you would rather study at a university where there are procedures and there are rules, although uh, Mr. Ribi has expressed his uh, his uh, joy and uh, content uh, that they would like to have as many students as possible, but obviously not at all costs. Just as you make your choice and you make a careful and conscious choice of which university you choose, they also want to have the conscious choice of introducing reasonable deadlines that everybody can follow. However, uh, the message and your request of extending the deadline will be communicated to the management and you can inquire with GSC Global Solutions or your local agent about the new deadline if it has been extended and if there is no do new deadline, then we would like to ask you the question right away. Are you providing admissions from the, uh, from the, uh, for, for a February intake? Yeah. So do you, how many program you are running in English mediums in February? Bachelor and master's both. Please share with us. For a spring. That kick keres fél éves képzések indulnak? Yeah. A tavaszi fél évben. Um uh, well that's that's again a hard question. Because what uh 
Okay, so what, what happens is normally we ask all students to start their studies in the full semester. So that means they need to be here uh, before September. Uh, so we don't want students to to start the studies in between semester in between semesters. So basically from the spring semester, but we've had that happening before. So it, it does not mean that it's, uh, it's not uh, possible at all. We just prefer for students to start their studies from the fall semester. Okay. Are you offering any scholarships? Somebody is asking. Well, the university does not offer, but we have uh, in Hungary the Tempus Public Foundation, and uh, it has. So Hungary has a, the Stipendium Hungaricum Scholarship, which uh, was launched by the Hungarian government in 2013, and this the, the mission is to to increase the number of foreign students to Hungary, and. It's a scholarship program, so uh, so it's a it's a bilateral educational cooperation agreement signed between the ministries of education in your country, for example, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, and in Hungary. And uh, if you check the website, this dependiums hungarycom you can see the list of the the countries which are in bilateral agreement with Hungary, and then you can apply for the programs. But the next site, next uh, application cycle is uh, for the academic year of 2021 and 22. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Of course, if there is any scholarship possibility on the in the meanwhile, uh, there is an initiative of the university itself. We will be informed of that. Uh, in the meantime, however, we've got a question that Minhaj Udin is uh, addressing to uh, all guests and hosts, and he would like to know why Hungary has been omitted from a list of countries uh whose nationals can travel to the european union uh, for the time being uh, uh mr udin you have read uh the this somewhere in the news you have to send us the link and then we can confirm whether it is fake uh whether it is anything that uh is credible however i do recommend that you always check it on the official website of the hungarian foreign office that is going to give you all your answers that is going to answer all your questions uh, regarding uh, your eligibility to enter the EU. Right now, this information can be neither uh, uh, refuted uh, or uh, confirmed. So please double check it with a foreign office or send us the link where you got the information from. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, there was one question whether Bangla medium students uh, will have the opportunity to uh, undertake a Skype test. So those who did not complete their education in English but do speak English, however, they went to a school where the language Bangla was the medium of instruction, are they also eligible to uh, participate in a Skype interview? Yes, uh, they are, but if they were studying in English, then it's also acceptable. Because if the medium of the instruction was in English, it, it means that he or she speaks English very well. Okay. So we may very not ask, ask them to, to have an interview with us. There is one okay. student uh, who already gave us the application to apply for international business and economics. Yes, yeah, so if you if you look at the screen, you will see that he's hoping for the best. So, I'm the um, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq. Uh, good, good, good luck to you. Okay, and thank you very much for uh, applying for a BBS. So, uh, do we have any other questions? Uh, yes, any opportunities for PhD, and what is the procedure or requirement? Do you offer any PhD programs for the time being, in the form of co tutelling or any other form? We have a doctoral school. Mm. But, 
wants to uh, what 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 doctoral school do you exactly have? Is it anything that is in line with uh, your profile, or uh, is it something very theoretical? I'll say it's theoretical. Uh, yeah, so all, all doctoral schools actually are theoretical. Okay, that's that's good. We will be answering this question to those who are interested. Okay, uh, we certainly. So this is uh, University of Applied Sciences, which means that I believe that it, you know uh, getting a PhD a PhD done uh, can be done on an individual basis. But as most other universities in Hungary, uh, no uh, PhD school is really prepared to receive masses of students. However, uh, I don't know who asked that question, but if you're interested in a PhD, please contact GSC Global Solutions and we will definitely communicate your uh, request uh, to the university. However, applying for a PhD program right now would be very late. That's what I feel, and of course, I, I'm sure uh, my, 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 my feelings, my uh, presumptions uh, could only be confirmed. Okay. Um, now, there is an important question by Iqbal H. Babor, who is asking why embassy authorities are using to, uh, are, you, are, are giving mathematical tests while it is not relative with the major subject. I'm sure that um, uh, Mr. Nora and uh, Mr. Attila know about the fact that in many cases, um, uh, embassy interviews are not only conducted to check the students' knowledge of English, but they are testing their knowledge of mathematics, which can be quite off-putting. Let's say somebody is applying in tourism. Uh, it is not a sine qua non. It is not an indispensable part of a tourism program to know high-level calculus or high-level mathematics. Uh, so do you think you would be able to uh, or do you have a designated person to coordinate with the embassies in general uh, so that the embassies would have a rough idea of what are the questions that they are not supposed to ask from our students? Well, the answer is no, unfortunately. So we can't actually approach the, uh, the embassy and, uh, and ask this. Even if I agree with the question, uh, I would say, yeah, I would say no to this question, unfortunately. So I'm sorry about that, but that's um, it's, it's something that um, that it's uh, uh, one important uh, question here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, l l let me just you know get, get this question because it is related, uh, Mohammed, uh, to the previous one. So although you do not have the uh, direct approach, let's say to support individual student applications. But at the very same time, what most universities are trying to do uh, in Hungary, not most, but some universities, uh, what they're doing is that they're helping the students, especially in difficult countries. And I would say that Bangladesh, uh, Nepal, and Pakistan are difficult countries as they don't have a Hungarian embassy. But mm -hmm. if there are, let's say, 20 or 30 students who have been assessed, who have been accepted by you, assessed by us, and they want to apply for a visa appointment for the consular interview, would you be able to help them by signing and sending a letter to the embassy asking for the appointment slots for the students. This is pure formality. This is just an administrative issue. But uh, the embassies, based on our uh, previous experience, are having a very hard time processing all the information uh, by individual applicants. So they would rather have a list of students that is sent to the embassy saying that these students have been accepted and we would like to ask them uh, the embassy to give an appointment for them so they can apply. I think embassies are much more at ease to deal with students coming through agencies with the support of the universities than having them applying on an individual basis. What is your uh, take on that? Is it something that you could perhaps discuss with the, uh, with the management? Yeah, I think it's uh, something that we can, uh, we may be able to discuss. We've uh, we've never had that before, so yeah, it's something that need, needs to be discussed. That for sure. 
Okay, so we take this as kind of a positive answer, or at least the, the take and the approach and your reaction uh, is very positive. We are all actually working towards bringing not large numbers of students, but quality students. And I'm emphasizing it to all the listeners uh, that in case your English is not good, and you're in a bad financial situation, do not apply, okay? It may have been extremely blunt, but we need to emphasize that Hungary is not one of the destinations, and BBS is not one of the destinations that will take uh, all those students who are simply trying to get into the European Union. So you have to justify your intention of applying to, uh, to, to BBS for a BBS program, uh, not only with the best of intentions, but with the intention of wanting to study, wanting to conclude your studies, and perhaps wanting to return to Bangladesh, uh, not to overstay in Europe more than what is needed. Okay, so that's just a little bit of a proviso for them. Now, there is one uh, question, and we do not have too much time for a lot of other questions, but Arifin Alif is asking, is the university, does the university have a semester waiver uh, if somebody uh, gets good uh, C CGPA in one semester, do you give a discount for the next semester of the tuition fee? So let's say somebody uh, is a straight A or A plus student, do you give any kind of a discount or any waiver starting the second or the third semester? Mm -hmm. And no, unfortunately, it's not possible. Even if you are the most excellent student of the course, we don't get okay. the <clears throat> So the tuition fee is tuition fee with, with no discount. <clears throat> I can. So if you're if the if you're even if you're the brightest individual in the world, you will enrich your world, and the world will make you richer uh, through your uh, corporate or your business dealings in the future. Uh, well, we cannot give a BB BBS cannot give you a waiver in that case. Okay, we've got time. I think for uh, do you still have a little bit a little bit of time, uh, Nora and Attila? Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah, okay. we do, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mohammed. what is the next question? You can see yes. almost the similar questions, so almost yeah. uh, questions are answered. So if anybody interested, they can contact us directly. We will give them answer um, individually. So from broadcasting side, we would like to close the session and we can discuss here our online personal conversation. Thank you. If you have any to more everyone. questions, you, you can, can say you ask to our student, uh, Dr. Beg Nora for the last time. Okay. Now, uh, in the meantime, I'd like to, in the meantime, I'd like to say thank you to uh, our guests today. Uh, and, and I'd like to emphasize how we how, how extremely grateful we are uh, to the Faculty of International Management of Business, uh, spearheaded by uh, Dr. Kotarin Cheku, the Dean of the Faculty, uh, who's the close associate for international affairs, Anna Sombat Hay, uh, has had a major role in organizing today's event. Uh, and I'd like to say thank you to uh, Mr. Attila Ribi and uh, Ms. Nora Sabo for their invaluable time and their invaluable input uh, in having the patience to answer a lot of good questions from students. And uh, although we have asked quite a few staggering questions to which there is no answer uh, for the time being, uh, seeing the current situation and knowing that it will be a fruitful cooperation, we would like to uh, say thank you to them once again for their time, their effort and the endorsement of a very important uh, role uh, of global dimensions. Uh, thank you very much uh, to uh, Mr. Uh, Mohamed Shoibchi of uh, GSC of Global Solutions, uh, who is a CEO and Managing Director, and uh, Shaukat Mal, CEO of uh, Friends uh, Consultancy, and uh, MD uh, Salaiman, CEO of uh, BSC Consultancy, and all those uh, who have been joining in. And of course, a big thank you for all those students who have been listening in. Please do contact your local agent or GSC Global Solutions for further information. Uh, so thank you very much uh, uh, for all of you guys uh, for being here today. And I'd like to give the word uh, to uh, Mr. Mohammed uh, to say a few concluding remarks.
thank you everyone we would like to hear a little word from our guest miss anna Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And thank you for all of you to be with us here. And I really hope that we had uh, had a very good chance to, to show you that we have a school here, we have a university here, which welcomes you. And, and I really hope that you are interested in our programs. Please check our website. If you have any questions, send us emails and, and we are here to help you. So thank you very much again. For, for all, all the support, for all the help that we received today, and thank you for your attendance. Thank you so much. We also thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, thank sure. you for all of uh, you, and uh, I hope you've been able to answer all these questions. And uh, if you have any queries, you can actually send us an email anytime. Um, the, uh, the email addresses can, can be found up on our website, so just uh, please feel free to contact us. So don't forget, if Hungary, if it's Hungary and it's Budapest, it should be Budapest Business School, okay? These are the, this is the improvised slogan that I've made up uh, as a concluding remark, okay? And please do have confidence do have faith in BBS, certainly, and do have faith in uh, uh, GSC Global Solutions or your local agents. Several universities have been working with GSC Global Solutions for the past five years. Uh, <laughs> students have had an extremely good feedback, and all the associates and subcontracted agents uh, of uh, GSC Global Solutions uh, are uh, verified agents uh, with a very good reputation. So on this positive note, uh, let us conclude the event for the time being. And if we may ask to our, our guests to stay for a couple of more minutes, that would be good. So we can have, uh, uh, we can spend a few more minutes uh, discussing uh, some related subjects uh, on admission, uh, etc. Okay then, thank you for everyone to join with us and we are always ready to give you answer and all kind of business solution admission support we will provide you from our side. So if anybody interested, you can contact our office. Officially, we are Dhaka office is closed and our Dhaka associate, they are open. And from out of Dhaka, you can contact our uh, Silet office, Bulna office, Russia office. For Dhaka region student, we can contact our associate, Dr. Uh, MD Sulaiman, CU BSC consultants. Another another one, our associate, Ms. Shokotara Mo, friends, consultancy, our office in Pantopot. So you guys can contact directly in Dhaka. So, but today we are going to close our online session. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Bye for now. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye bye. Okay, Donova, thank you, and Shukriya, Donova and Shukriya, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, guys, we already out from uh, broadcasting. Thank you so much for this, this opportunity. I think, <laughs> really, it was a, a very we we received one what was ninety minutes for this. So, thank you so much. I think we had enough time to to give a picture of the, the university and the programs. Okay. Uh, Mohammed uh, and all those on the subcontinent in Bangladesh mainly, would you uh, give us just a couple of minutes so that we can have a short discussion in Hungarian?